The next mayor of Spokane will be sworn in today, when you can expect Nadine Woodward to officially take control of the mayor's office. Winter Storm Watch just issued this morning, tracking one more snowfall for the year, plus what weather you can expect for the NYE celebrations. Washington is raising the age to buy tobacco products to combat vaping. This morning, we're asking you to join the conversation. Will the new smoking age help the vaping epidemic? Holy cow! What a way for the hundredth year to end! The Seahawks fell short from winning the NFC West. How a few centimeters made all the difference for the division title. With New Year's approaching, you may have some fitness goals. This morning, how you can knock out your next workout. Up with Cram starts right now with Jen York, Evan Narani, and Dina Marie McNichol. Well, good morning. <laughs> it's Monday, Thomas. Woohoo! The Monday after let's, Christmas. Let's get going. All right. Gonzaga women's basketball started off their West Coast Conference opener with an exciting win. The Zags rallied from trailing by 20 points in the second quarter to them beating the Portland Pilots 62 to 57. Now their next game is on January 2nd against BYU in Provo, Utah. Congratulations, quite, ladies. Quite a comeback there. Glad we're starting on a positive note because for me, I was watching football all day <laughs> yesterday. Yes. It started great because I'm a Green Bay fan, so we had the big comeback in, against the Lions, but I was really pulling for Seattle to, to get Green Bay to that one seed, but they couldn't top the, uh, the Niners. Know. That was a tough game. I was flying yesterday, and I was in Oakland, so we had the 49ers, and then I was obviously coming to Spokane, so we had all the uh -huh. Seattle Seahawks yes. fans. <laughs> so it was like a very interesting waiting room situation or it's, like it's, that's a terminal. Very, it's a very competitive <laughs> vibe that you get there. Yeah. All right, Thomas, what can we look ahead for this week when it comes to weather? Oh, boy, it's going to be a busy couple uh, first days of the week in terms of the weather. In fact, today is really going to be one of the calmest days that we experience all week and even heading into New Year's Eve is going to be very messy for the area. So let's get to it. We have a variety of weather alerts already this morning. Brand new winter storm watch in effect for a lot of areas in northeastern Washington. Many North Idaho areas, not quite Spokane or Coeur d'Alene because these areas are going to get plenty of snow throughout the day tomorrow. That's a Tuesday thing. But this morning we have dense fog advisories over the Palouse and the Lewiston area where we've seen patchy fog with visibility as low as a quarter of a mile. It has lifted a bit for the Pullman area, but it's also dropped in Lewiston. So this is something that we'll be watching all morning long. Of course, make sure to turn on your headlights even after sunrise in a couple hours here. As for our 12 hour forecast up into the mid 30s yet again, nothing unusual for December, but notice that those precipitation chances start creeping in later on today, but I don't think any snow arrives until first thing tomorrow morning. There's just a quick snapshot of what future tracker looks like. That's the 6 a.m. hour tomorrow when we start to see some snow moving into parts of the area. So coming up a breakdown as to how much snows in the forecast and when it will transition over to rain before the new year. A forecast you won't want to miss coming up in a few minutes. All right, thank you, Thomas. We'll check back in with you a little bit later. Today, Spokane's mayor-elect Nadine Woodward will be sworn into office. She will be the 45th mayor of Spokane. Today, Woodward will be sworn in at noon at the U.S. Pavilion in Riverfront Park, and an inauguration reception will follow from 5 to 7 p.m. Woodward actually settled into City Hall a few weeks before her official start date. This was done by our current mayor, David Condon, to provide a smooth transition period. Woodward is optimistic she and the council will be able to work together, especially given the cooperative reputation of the new city council president, Fran Beggs. Today, a memorial service will be held for Pierce County Deputy Cooper Dyson. A procession for Dyson will begin at 11 a.m. The service will be open to the public. It will be held at the Tacoma Dome at 1 p.m. Deputy Dyson died earlier this month. He was heading to a domestic violence incident when his vehicle went off the road and caught fire. A U.S. Border Patrol agent and their canine partner were involved in a car crash yesterday. Investigators say they hit black ice on Highway 395. Canine Jackie did die in that crash. We're told that the agent has multiple injuries but is okay. 
Now, the acting chief patrol agent sent out this statement this morning saying, we understand the risks that we take as well as our canine partners. It is never easy when we lose a partner. Surveillance video captured a wild crash in Oak Harbor over the weekend. An elderly woman lost control of her vehicle, crashed through the fence and then onto the parking lot below. The woman survived the crash after Good Samaritans rushed to her aid. Witnesses believed a medical condition may have contributed to the crash. After a wild finish, the San Francisco 49ers beat the Seattle Seahawks 26 to 21. Now the 49ers have clinched the NFC West division title. The Seahawks will face the Philadelphia Eagles this Sunday. Kickoff for that game is at 1.40 p.m. Coming up later in our show, Creme 2's Karthik Ben Katraman will break down how the Seahawks fell short of the division title. Well, that is your morning rush. More news in less time. Let us know what's happening in your neighborhood by using the hashtag UpWithCreme on social media. With the new year comes new laws in the state of Washington. We're giving you a look ahead at what those are and how they could affect you. Now, first off, paid family leave and medical leave goes into effect in 2020. The new law states any person who works 820 hours over the course of the year can receive 12 to 18 weeks of paid leave for a qualifying life event. Workers can cash in leave for events like birth or adoption of a child, a serious illness or health condition a serious illness in a family member or certain military events involving the return of a deployment of a family member. Next law, car seats are also changing in the new year. Children under the age of 13 who are 4 feet 9 inches tall will be required to ride in a booster seat. Children up to 2 years old must be in a rear seat and then children between 2 and 4 years old must ride in a seat with a harness. Now, the law recommends children under 13 ride in the back seat whenever possible. The minimum wage in Washington is also going up starting January 1st. It will increase from $12 to an hour to $13.50 an hour. In July 2020, it will also be illegal to pay those with disabilities less than the state minimum wage. The initial minimum wage increase passed increase back in 2017, but wages rose incrementally since then. The smoking age will go from 18 to 21 starting in 2020. The new law will include tobacco and vaping products. However, the law only targets sales, not possession, meaning 18 year olds can buy these products in another state and bring them back without violating the law. Washington enjoys eight other states, including Oregon in the rising of the smoking age. And for a full list and descriptions on the new laws going into effect in the state of Washington starting January 1st. You can go to creme.com or in our creme 2 mobile app. When it comes to federal laws taking effect, the national minimum smoking age has been raised from 18 to 21. The bill was passed in the Senate as part of an effort to combat youth vaping epidemics. The legislation bans anyone under 21 from buying any form of tobacco products, including e-cigarettes. And this morning, we want to know what you think. Will the new smoking age help this vaping epidemic? Let us know what you think by voting in our Crime 2 mobile app. The U.S. FDA has quickly implemented the newly signed law, according to the agency's website. An update on the FDA site notifies readers that with the December 20th signing of an amendment to the Federal Drug, Food and Cosmetic Act by President Donald Trump, it is now illegal for a retailer to sell any tobacco products, including cigarettes, cigars and e-cigarettes to anyone under 21. The FDA was able to take up to six months to amend its policies an additional 90 days to implement them after the president signed the amendment as a part of a sweeping $1.4 trillion government spending measure. Rather than granting a lead-in period, the FDA is officially notifying retailers that the higher minimum wage is already in effect. And this morning, we want you to weigh in. Vote now in our Crump2 mobile app. There is a concern, it, there's a certain, excuse me, pair of royals who have chosen to spend their holidays in the Pacific Northwest. It's Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. The royal pair opted to stay at a secluded location with their son Archie just four hours from Seattle on Canada's Vancouver Island. The Buckingham Palace hasn't released any details as to where the prince and his family are staying, but Prince Harry has been seen hiking near the North Hill Regional Park. Prime Minister of Canada Justin Trudeau tweeted out an official message welcoming them when 
the news was released. The island where they're staying was named after Harry's great, great, great grandmother, Queen Victoria. That's a lot of greats. I think you even <laughs> missed one there. Great, was it great, 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 great? great? Yes, it was four. Okay, there it is. <laughs> Thank four you, grades. Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> but how, it's so fun to have the Royals here in our area enjoying our Pacific Northwest beauty. It is, it's so beautiful around here. I still have yet to get to the west side of the state, but I've been enjoying a lot of, I mean, I just went to North Idaho this past weekend to go skiing yet again. Right. So you really can't go wrong from the Pacific Northwest or the Inland Northwest. Yes, well, 2020, your travel bucket list has to be well, yes. Seattle. And Vancouver. Well, I, for me, area. I usually go by baseball stadiums. Oh, and yeah. last year I went to San Diego for the first time. So <gasps> Seattle's on my top priority list this upcoming year. The Padres has a great stadium. Very fun. All right. Well, New Year's brings in a lot of goals and resolutions. I know I have my own. We're connecting the dots on how to keep them. And coming up in our next half hour, Spokane is starting off the new decade with a bang where you can catch their fireworks display on New Year's Eve.